Recently, the main man Ito actually used the uh, mini banshee. In the video, he does get raided inside the base, so it was easy for me to see what parts of the base were good for an online raid and which ones were not the best. So we've taken everything that works from inside the base and everything that didn't, shuffled it around, and now what we've got is pretty cool. All right, boys, let's get touring on the base. Of course, we start this off with a mini Satori disconnectable. Pretty standard at this point. That's how you disconnect it, if you didn't know, somehow. And uh, that's how you reconnect it. Moving away from the external TC, we can head into the gatehouse. Again, really standard. Peaks to look in the compound, peaks to look out of the compound. However, I can promise you the compound is quite exciting. We got some turrets above and some drop boxes. And some nice space for our large furnaces too. A lot going on in the compound, so I'll try and break it down for you guys. On each of the corners, we have a respawn point that also comes with a bit of a miniature china wall section. And then off to the side here, right now we're on a breach peak that also has a nice spot for a turret as well. Makes the compound really nice and defendable outside the compound and inside the compound if it's breached. Underneath is our respawn point here with a locker to accompany two beds. But before we go any deeper with the tour, we have a sponsor for today's video. The Hunter, Call of the Wild. This game takes place in an immersive open world where you can hunt over 60 animal species. And me personally, I hope you can hunt bears because... Bro, there's a bear right where I need to be. <laughs> there's another bear. <laughs> and they both just lock on to me. <laughs> now this game you can play alone or you can play with friends online in multiplayer. Today I'm here to talk about the brand new DLC that was released in June. It's set inside Finland where you guys can explore a vast and rich nature through wild fields, thick forests, and vibrant hills. 19 different animal species can be found here that roughly include grouse, a brown bear, yes, thank god, <laughs> some deer, and this little raccoon dog. Discover new and unique ways to conceal yourself from the animals. Of course, you can just enjoy the scenic and pretty landscapes as well. Plus, you guys can also enjoy the northern lights, which would be a pretty cool thing for you guys to do with your friends. The Reventuli Coast DLC is out now, so get it today. Alright, jumping back into the rest of the tour, these are our peaks to help us look inside the compound. And of course, we've got windows to look outside as well, with small boxes to help you crouch. But yeah, so there's four of them in total, it's completely symmetrical. And they can all have a searchlight above as well. Gives you some nice vantage to light up the outside of your compound during the night time. If we keep walking along, you can see the wide gap peaks from underneath. This is roughly uh, how a raider would visualize it. But we'll go through the front door now so you guys can get an actual base tour. Mobility chute, standard, comes with a peek up onto the um, peek down floor. And then we have a jump up all the way to our shooting floor. But we'll drop all the way back down and start at the bottom of the base. Heading into our shell and then our star two. Shell is pretty bog standard, there's not a lot going on. The space for turrets, the space for deployables. Whatever you want to put in here, you can. And the peak downs for this section are really, really basic. I just wanted to keep things stable and not have too much going on. This area can be peaked down onto. There are some blind spots, but the peaks are not the most defendable point of this base design. Jumping up, it's the standard two by one expansion. Um, this is mostly how everybody does these, so pretty bog standard here. Some loot space on the second floor, and of course our double single airlock starter base. With enough bags for hopefully all your teammates. Of course, you can take out some deployables if you're going to need more than three bags. And that person on the team that you're not a big fan of can get a bag in the airlock. But yeah, starter, pretty simple. Nothing too fancy going on there. We'll jump up now to third floor where things start to differ just a little bit. Our single door leads out onto our peak down floor. And we've got some space for boxes once again. Heading out into peaks, we've got a bit of a multi-TC peak, which is really situational, doesn't really count. And some more space for deployables up here. Yeah, as you can see, the peaks are really, really basic. Uh, we're just trying to keep it stable in this area. So don't focus on the peak downs too much. They're there if you need them, but hopefully you'll use the other things instead. Jumping up to our fourth floor, it's all about the respawns, and we've tucked some bunkers up here as well to keep that raid cost nice and high for you guys. We've got our bedrooms up here with a battery spot and a locker. And there's definitely some space to depot storage in these vending machines around the place. 
if you're coming in from a helicopter above. These are our bunkers though, high qual bunkers, completely gapless, 15 rockets to get inside of there and steal the loot if they want. And there's two of those in total. You open those from underneath by the way, if that's not, uh, if that's not obvious, you need to go underneath to place the triangle roof. And then we'll head out into shooting floor, everything has got its ability to crouch, so you guys can still control that AK spray. And pretty bog standard peaks all the way through the compound, nice wide gaps, and some nice head glitch angles for our gatehouse. Really good visibility from the shooting floor and it'll be nice and defendable. And of course, really stable because it's wide gapped. Then we've got our roof pickups and it's just the standard siren light one, just to keep things a little bit cheaper. And we've got some more peaks if we head around the rest of the shooting floor. Super clean, lots of entrances into the shooting floor so it's hard to take that one over. And then we can head up our ladder hatch to the roof. Where there is space for our vending machine bunker if you guys want to slap that in the middle, I'm sure you know how to do that now. Two turrets are covering the roof nicely and our windmills are spread out in the hope that an MLRS could not take them both out at once. Anyway boys, that is the base. Let's move on to the build cost now. On screen is the total build cost for everything you just saw on the tour. So that's the big boy compound, all of that stuff. Second up, that is it in box amounts, just so you guys can visualize what the build cost is a little bit easier. Lastly is the total upkeep that will be spread between 3 TCs and they'll be decently even because it's a multi TC base. And uh, now we can move on to the building process of the video. Starting off with a 2x1, hopefully you know how to build one of these. Pretty standard stuff. Place your TC in the opposite hand side of the door so that we can bring a triangle shelf through from our jump up. That's the cost of the starter base without any doors. You really don't need much. Expanding round to our first jump up and of course as I said you can use this for a TC shelf that half height in there And then from our jump up, we're gonna place another jump up So you come up at the same square if that makes sense You'll see in a second what I'm trying to describe if I didn't make sense So both jump ups are gonna line up nice and easy Then make the decision do you want a double door or a single door completely up to you And uh, once you've decided place one of them down then we can seal up our jump ups and create our loot rooms off to the sides. Just making our loot rooms just now and uh, we'll get some double doors on top of those. Wall that in and we'll have a door frame in the middle as well. And then our jump up to third floor needs to be above our original exit. Hopefully that makes sense. I'll go down and show you exactly where I'm placing jump up though. You can see if I drop down, that's the entrance. So we'll put that on that side. There we go. All right, third floor. We've got some space for a mini loot room, a proper loot room, our exit to peaks and our jump up to fourth floor. So let's get moving on to that. our square jump up in the middle main loot room off to the left and a smaller loot room on the right with some doors in front of all that then you can add a roof on top of this section of course leaving out that last square and then we need to airlock this at the top to make it a little bit safer and you're going to need two doors to do that and a window. And then you're safe enough. Got a nice tall base to do a bit of roof camping with. Now you can start doing your externals. So we're going to build out with seven squares as you know and then build back with triangles. Multi TC is super easy now. I'm sure we've all got it on lockdown. Very old concept so we're fine. Building out with seven squares coming back with triangles. If you need to see it again don't worry I'd do it again in the video so don't worry. And we'll start expanding out slightly. These triangles are going to get covered up just like Mini Satori did to make sure they can't be soft sided to reduce the stability of our shell. So make those nice and safe, cover them up. And right now they're going to be decaying, so let's attach them to the rest of the triangles if that makes sense. 
now all these walls are touching and we can finally add this to a gatehouse then an external tc so we're building our external tc now don't forget about the double half hall super important and you can decide if you want to do single doors, windows, guards doors on this. Completely up to you. And then just build back towards your gatehouse. You'll need to place the windows of the gatehouse for stability in order to seal it up. So just keep that in mind. And then you've got your gatehouse connected to your external TC. Let's connect the gatehouse to the main base. Using frames, not foundations, we need to leave that two foundation gap there in order to let us wide gap later on. So that's our first connection. That's how we do it. In case you missed anything, I'm going to do it again. So we're going out seven squares now. Breaking our squares and we're coming back with triangles. Triangle half moons until we come back to the main base to create a little hexagon. And then from there, it's the exact same steps as before. So I'll leave you guys with that. Okay, we have our two external TCs connected up and they're looking good. Now off of the main base, a simple square with two triangles should cover up the gap. Completing our footprint and making it look pretty cool. From there, let's work on the shell a little bit. Towards our entrances, we'll need a single door and a wall. And then we can start building our jump ups inside the mobility chute. The chute is super simple as long as you follow along as I'm doing. Half wall with a window on top. So we can have our ankle biter onto the peak down floor. And just keep building along. And I like to do triangle frames in there to keep the stability alive as well. Building our next jump up as well. And then framing that off. And then we can place down our triangles for the peaks. You want stability for this one, you'll need a frame in there. So place that one down. And then we can build that exact same thing on the opposite side. As you can see, there's probably some gaps inside your shell, so we're going to try and hide those a little bit. If you build these two triangles on the outside, like I've just done, and place in these frames, they'll help to cover up the gaps. And we also use those frames in the shooting floor later on as well. But um, as soon as you want those gaps covered up, this is how you're going to have to do it. Keep these frames as stowed because they've got a bit of a fat conditional, and they should cover up the gaps pretty well. 
while we're placing frames, let's get some more underneath our peak downs. Underneath these three triangles. And we've got even more frames in the middle here on the squares. Just leading up to stabilize our peaks. Now, this time I'm just going to do different peak downs. If you want to do the other ones that are more stable, you can absolutely go for that. They're super basic, but this is the harder version. Just in case you weren't a fan of the peak downs I did, that is another option that you can do. Let's get back onto placing some more frames. Just in the same places as last time, leading up to stabilize our next floor. Adding in the floors, this time we're not going to hide the conditional just because I've had some issues with uh, deployables despawning and stuff. I think that's the source of it. So make sure you're placing your floors as I'm doing and you have the gaps where I do to make sure everything's looking right. Placing the squares off the main base, the triangles off of the uh, multi-CC. And you can see where I have my gaps. And then the square gaps off to the sides like this. So just get it looking like that and that'll be fine. Next, let's get our bunkers down because we want bunkers as soon as possible so we can finally go to sleep without getting offline raided. Bunker placement's important. Make sure you're copying the triangles as I do. So that one needs to come from there with a gap towards our feet right now. And I'll build it another time, making sure this wall's soft side. That's another thing. Don't forget about that. Very, very important. We're covering up the conditional inside here with that frame from above and from the side. And again, watching how I place the roof tiles, just like that. Now, if you were to upgrade your bunker, you would need to also upgrade this frame inside. And making sure we activate the conditional to hide any gaps. Gaps are most effectively hidden when your bunker is fully high quality, so that's some more motivation to get those bunkers upgraded to HQM. But yeah, get that frame placed in as well. That's our other conditional. And that's how you make your bunker completely gapless. And we'll seal the ones from the top later on. Adding in some more frames and then we can build the bedroom now. This is the bedroom on the fourth floor that goes in the middle. There's two of these. Don't forget about your roof peak up. I always forget to do that when I'm on a live server. Try your best not to. Half wall with a window just like that. And then we have a window door there. And if you're wondering what the window's for, I'll just remind you guys after this, you can see what the setup looks like when the base is done with the deployables. So that's why we have a window there, so you can get your vending machines in. Then you can just throw down the rest of your frames. So we have four exits out onto the shooting floor. And frames spammed all the way in between with garage doors. That's what that bit looks like. Don't forget your roof pickups. I may have forgotten it, but yeah, you know how to do it. You're fine. And then we'll add in our roofs, exactly the same as below. Pulling these squares towards the main base. And obviously the bunkers are a little bit different, so that's our gaps for just now. Right, let's jump back into compound and finish up our gatehouses. And then we can start to build out our wide gaps foundations. And they're going to climb all the way around to the side of the base. Just like that. These foundations are not touching, so they need to be connected via frames. So if your foundations are decaying, try and remember what I said there. And exact same thing on the opposite side of the base. Building round again, making sure we connect up these foundations so that they do not decay. Just like that. And in the middle here, we're going to do some more wide gapping. This one's kind of small. It's just like one square, but yeah. Building out with the three square method. And then we have a little breach peak on the go here. Make sure you do your high foundation there too. That's important for the turret. Then you can raise your frames up before you do the reconnection. And just building it up to the shooting floor height. Don't go any higher than that. Add in those half holes for stability and then reconnect your breach peak. Once that's built, we can add in some windows with half walls on top. And lastly, our roofs can go in there as well to let us use our peak. Two triangle roofs, and they need to be the same upgrade in order for the conditional to activate. There you go. So make sure they're both stone, both metal, whatever you want. 
and we'll do the exact same thing on the opposite side in case you missed it. Three square wide gap method, building it out into a breech beak with a raised triangle foundation so you have a spot to place a turret inside your compound later on. Get your frames raised all the way up to shooting floor height, don't go any higher than that. And then get your windows down on the left and right with some half walls on top. Lastly, the roofs go in. And now we can start working on our external towers. From each point of the wide gap on this corner here, we're going to do a square with two triangles. And there's four of these in total, so I think I'll show you guys how to build two of them. And then from there, I'm sure you'll have it on lockdown. So we're going to face our breach peak and do our single doors from there. It's very important that you do that so that you still have space to place your large furnaces. So don't forget about that. And then that's your spot for your locker. And you can seal that up. And then on top, you've got your windows. Once again, your entrance to this section is facing the breach peak, not the gatehouse. So make sure you do that. And then that's one tower done. Three more to go. Again, my single doors are facing the breach peak. They're not facing the gatehouse. Super important. And I somehow did it wrong in that one. That's my bad. <laughs> Make sure you don't do that. Have your doors facing your breach peak. Especially the bottom doors. Like, if you forget the top, it's okay. But make sure the bottom doors face the breach peak. Anyway, now we're onto barricades. Because this is the only bit that's kind of complicated. So, I'm just showing you. This is how you get two barricades on here. Uh, without them falling down or anything like that. Kind of confusing. But yeah, just do what I did there. And you're sorted. Now we can raise frames all the way up to the shooting floor height level, all the way around our wide gaps and all the way around the bits on the section of main base as well. Nice and simple. Yes, this is the main base section as well. Get these frames raised up too. Just for stability throughout the shooting floor. And once all of our frames are placed in, we'll get this section done as well. And then once they're all placed in, we can throw some floors down on our shooting floor. Floors are super basic. I'm sure you guys can already tell which ones go where. But I'll just show you guys anyway. Boom. Once all the floors are placed in, you can get your windows down as well. Super basic, just a perimeter of windows going all the way around, nothing fancy here. And then these are all the necessary frames inside your shooting floor that you'll need to place. Once you have your door frames in, there's some necessary floor frames, so let's get those placed. In front of our roof pickups, and of course, beside our ladder hatch as well, where we're going to exit out onto roof. And then once all those floor frames are placed in, you can add your floors back in and just copy what's underneath them. Exact same thing as before. Placing in all the floors. Once you've done that, let's, let's build the um, turret spot with the roof peak up and then our, ex our exit onto roof with windows or walls completely up to you. And get those done on both sides, just like that. And we can add in our roof ramps. It's literally just square roof ramps in every available spot. All the way around. In the middle here, upgrade these to metal because they cover a gap that looks inside the bunker. So you want to make sure those are metaled up to conceal all the boxes inside. Then, around the back of these two um, roofs, we can add in some windmill towers. And get your windmills on top of there. And then you can delete the triangles. Just looks cooler. And once you've done that, that completes the base design. 
Hopefully you boys did enjoy this video. If you did, please feel free to leave me a like and drop me a comment down below. This base is a bang. I hope to see it out there in some servers. Go and defend some online raids using this beast. Remember to check out Call of the Hunter. The links will be in the description. And I'll see you boys in the next video. Cinebit.